don't know me, I'm Marina Bozzi. I'm a founding director and treasurer of MPI, but I'm also the chair of the MPI Kai um, Development Group. So my affiliation is with uh, the Computer Music Center at Stanford University. So today I didn't list you, Leonardo, but you're going to be the first speaker. Um, I will be giving a, 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 an introduction, uh, an overall introduction of the work that Empire Kai did in the last uh, few years. Um, but before that, Leonardo will be introducing the overall structure of MPI and how we fit into the overall structure. Um, Matteo uh, from Audio Nova and the University of Padua will be walking us through the um, reference software for the audio recording preservation use case. And finally, Mert uh, will be closing the meeting with the um, description and uh, detailed description, I should say, of the MPI-CHI enhanced audio conference experience. So a lot of information, but I think uh, super interesting. So thank you for joining us. At this point, I'm going to leave uh, the microphone to you, Leonardo, um, because- And the screen. Uh, oh. Okay, something specific of this new computer that it loses point. Okay, so um, my brief speech will, will be about the uh, introduction to MPAI. So, um, MPAI, um, who is MPAI? Uh, moving picture audio in data coding by artificial intelligence. This is uh, the formal name of the organization, International Non-Affiliated Non-Profit SDO. We develop AI-based data coding standard and our uh, talk uh, tonight, my tonight, uh, will be about uh, one particular uh, instance. We have several, as we'll see in a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is important is that uh, we uh, wanted to attach to the extent possible, clear intellectual property rights licensing frameworks. Um, so uh, the basis of our, our standardization, approach to standardization of AI uh, data coding is, um, is the um, use components. So we have a, a big or small AI application uh, to the extent possible, we try to subdivide it in smaller components. There are several advantages, and I have no time to, to go into the details, but they are quite interesting. Um, so the, we call the components AI modules, AIM. We aggregate uh, in one or more um, uh, AI workflows uh, to serve particular purposes, and uh, we execute the, the workflows in a standard environment called the AIF. Um, and here is um, uh, some brief words about uh, uh, this uh, basic uh, um, environment. So you see that we have uh, um, AIMs. Uh, the AIMs are defined by their function and by their interfaces, which mean the data format in and out. Uh, and then we have, of course, uh, the uh, entire um, workflow. So plenty of JSON data to describe the uh, AIF environment, to describe the AI workflows, which mean essentially uh, the connections of the AI modules. And, and then um, a, a description, JSON description of the um, AI uh, modules. Um, what we are doing uh, in this area, and this is one of the uh, standards that we plan to publish uh, on, at the end of um, September, uh, is uh, an extension. Um, so far, we assumed that uh, the AI app was a secure, um, but now we are providing uh, the first means uh, to, um, to support a, a security of the environment and the execution. Uh, you see communication services, uh, encryption services, and attestation service. These are the three um, uh, APIs essentially that we are uh, um, um, adding to the specification. 
So in terms of empire standard, we have uh, uh, the, the first foundational um, standard that I've talked about, the AI framework, and we also have the governance of the empire ecosystem because uh, when you develop standard, you create an ecosystem and ecosystems need government, maybe light, maybe, maybe heavy, but the, an ecosystem is needed. Um, we have more standards. Um, this uh, four standards have been um, approved by, by MPI. They have been adopted without the specification by uh, IEEE, as I will say in a minute, so the, the last one, which is still ongoing. And um, we have also the um, MPAI metaverse model in the functionalities part and uh, the um, second uh, uh, technical report on the functionality profiles. Um, we have ambitious plans, but I think that we will be able to keep the promise. Um, for the end of September, we should be able to um, approve five standards. One is the extension of the AI framework that I have explained. Then we have avatar representation and animation. Uh, very ambitious, but at the moment, uh, more uh, restrained in terms of scope uh, connected to autonomous vehicles. Um, multimodal conversation. Uh, multimodal conversation is about uh, uh, human conversing with uh, with machines where both the human and machine express emotion. Um, and then we have uh, MPI uh, metaverse model architecture, which is another ambitious uh, project that we are uh, conducting. Blowing in the pot. We have um, uh, two uh, standards activities. The same uh, end of September, we should be able to issue uh, two call for technologies, one on artificial intelligence for health and another for extended reality uh, venues. And uh, we are exploring two projects uh, on video coding, one uh, um, end to end and another AI enhanced and the server-based predictive multiplayer gaming. So these are uh, three uh, exploration projects. Uh, so as I said, we have um, a, a very a very good relationship with uh, IEEE and they have adopted uh, uh, four uh, at the moment, um, MPI standards as uh, IEEE um, standards, MPI AIF, MPI CAE. Uh, this is version one, of course, version two, has been recently approved and uh, we have not initiated anything. Then we have MPI um, MMC, uh, Multimodal Conversation. This one, I never talked about before about this, uh, this is um, um, compression understanding of industrial data. Uh, it is about um, uh, predicting the performance of, uh, of a company, which means what's the probability that the, pro that the, pro uh, that the company defaults. That's uh, in concrete terms uh, what uh, the standard is about. And finally, uh, the uh, neural network watermarking, which is uh, another uh, very promising area, because uh, uh, if you have a, a, a neural network and you have spent uh, half a million to um, uh, to train it, uh, you would like to make sure that uh, the uh, neural network is protected. So all this has been achieved in less than three years. So um, it's time to uh, give the floor to uh, to Marina uh, after thanking you for your attention and uh, uh, looking forward to working you in this exciting uh, Empire project on content-based audio enhancement. This is our motto, join Empire, share the fun and build the future. Marina, it's your turn. Archive version one is also part of the IEEE um, portfolio standard as 3302-2022. Uh, and the idea behind its inception was to um, make sure that we improve, uh, optimize the user experience when uh, we're listening to audio. And when I talk audio, I talk about speech and music and so on and so forth. The idea is that depending on the context, the environment that one finds himself or herself in, we can enhance and optimize the experience. So the idea is that not always we are in optimal condition. In other words, uh, we can be in the home, in the studio, on the go, etc. So the idea is that to take that into consideration in the design of the audio. And when uh, um, we first started working on this, we identified four use cases, and these are the core of the technical specifications of version one, as I said, also IEEE 3302. Um, so again, Leonardo showed us, showed kind of the basic building blocks uh, of um, 
our design. And uh, we call it Lego type of AI standardization. Why? Because we have a core module, which is the AI module or AIM, for which we specify inputs and outputs, but not necessarily the direct functionality of it. So we can have different implementation that can fit with other AI modules to create what we call a workflow. And the workflow constitutes the full use case. So you could have uh, one vendor or one implementer um, designing one AIM module, all the overall workflow, as long as the input and outputs of uh, the workflow or the AIMs are correctly specified. So that's kind of the idea. And based on this, uh, MPI created a number of applications. Kai is one of them. And uh, we have specifically, as I mentioned, four use cases. We start with the emotion enhanced speech. And the idea is that nowadays, a lot of conversation comes through avatars or um, not necessarily in live persons, but um, in order to make the conversation more appealable, we would like to create emotions uh, to uh, add to the, you know, emotionless uh, speech. So we can add emotion to um, segments of speech that doesn't have an emotion either by using a tag. Um, so we have a list of emotions and we select or whatever, happy. and added to um, the overall synthesis of the speech, or we derive from a model utterance the desired emotion and extract the feature and add, add it on, if you wish, to the, to the, uh, to the speech. Um, audio recording preservation is one of the uh, reference software we're gonna be introducing today, and it's a very important application because um, Nowadays, uh, um, there is a lot of uh, cultural heritage risks uh, uh, to be completely um, forgotten or lost. And so the idea is that we enable the preservation of uh, um, um, digitized, of, uh, for example, in this particular case of uh, open relay magnetic tape. And uh, not only we allow the preservation by digitizing it correctly, but also um, providing an access copy in a digital form. So this is a very interesting use case. I just got back from the US libraries, Library of Congress, and there's a lot of work going on there. Um, speech restora restoration system is uh, um, a very specific implementation of restoration in that uh, often we try to <laughs> eliminate or minimize uh, um, noises that appear um, in the in the um, in the audio track, and here sometimes you don't have enough to actually um, adjust. So the idea is that if we have a vocal track that's missing, completely missing, we can replace it um, with a synthetic version as long as we know we have a, a sample of the voice that we want to reproduce, so that is uh, recreated. And finally, last but not least, and again, this is the topic of our reference software representation today as well, is the enhanced audio conference uh, experience, which basically, especially after the COVID um, experience we all went through, um, we rely much more on an audio conference environment. And sometimes the environment is not optimal, it's noisy, it's not intelligible and so on and so forth. So the idea is to optimize this experience by separating different speech signals, uh, reducing background noises is necessary and transmitting the spatial, <coughs> excuse me, attributes of the environment. So again, we're gonna be focusing today on the reference software for the audio recording preservation, ARP, and for the enhanced audio conference. Uh, okay. So I'm going to actually run through this slide quite quickly because uh, I want to give enough time to Matteo and, uh, and Mert. Again, speech is not just about the lexical content, but also uh, a number of aspects, including the age, the identity, the emotional state of the speaker. So we convert emotionless speech into um, um, speech with emotions. And uh, basically, the way uh, the, the file format we're using is just a simple dot wave uh, 
which can be found in the ITR specification BS2088. And the idea can, is that we can add um, emotion based on a standard list of emotion, and you're going to find the list in the standard specification, or we can derive it by extracting feature from the model utterance. So here, um, I hope you start becoming familiar. We have basically uh, five AIMs. The green ones are the AI modules that specify um, that put together specify this AI workflow or for the emotional and speech use case. And uh, we actually have two paths. The upper path is um, um, basically describes um, the case where we derive the emotion from the model utterance. And the lower path uh, describes a case where we derive the emotion from an emotion list. So a brief demo, um, this is actually an actress recording um, a segment. Let's see if I can do it this way. That really is remarkable. I never would have imagined that was possible. Can you hear it? Did it come through? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Yes. Okay, excellent. So that was the recording. And um, the idea is to, to me at least that is a surprise. And here is the text-to-speech with transfer my prosody. That really is remarkable. I never would have imagined that was possible. Um, another a brief example, for example, doubt. Are you absolutely certain that you've been taking the medication as the doctor prescribed? And the text-to-speech with transfer prosody. Are you absolutely certain that you've been taking the medication as the doctor prescribed? So, um... The audio um, recording preservation, again, we have problems uh, um, in that we have large, sometimes large, but even small um, um, collection of uh, audio document. They risk to be permanently lost because of the obsolescence of the format, degradation, and so on and so forth. And uh, typically to, um, to recover this information, we, we record into a digital format, but doing this doesn't mean it's completely neutral. Um, we do introduce errors, sometimes because of the operator mistakes, sometimes because the documentation is not quite clear and there is a, a, a level of uh, indetermination that is difficult to uh, decide a priori. Only maybe very knowledgeable musicologists can give us the right choice of what exactly to do. So uh, as, a bottom, uh, as a bottom line, the cost may be skyrocketing in order to preserve this important information. So the idea is we use artificial intelligence to reduce the cost for the um, repetitive tasks and, uh, um, and, and and then we decide which level of restoration is appropriate for which case. So the use case, specific use case that we're using is the open real magnetic tape. This is again, um, the overall picture of the um, AI uh, workflow, AIW for the ARP. Um, we start with uh, two AIMs that analyze both the audio uh, contained in the open real tape and the video. So we place a camera in order to detect uh, what we call irregularities. Irregularities are then classified and uh, uh, restored. And the restored version goes into the access copy. Uh, the original version with the video, with the list of irregularities and the images of the irregularities goes into the preservation copy. So, yeah, I mean, uh, we have potential errors uh, that occur in the digitalization here. Um, we call them irregularities and the irregularities are um, detected both um, from the audio content and the video content. Um, then they are classified by AI and then um, used to restore the original copy, uh, to restore uh, the, the, the audio document and also include it in the um, preservation copy. So a, a brief, uh, uh, a brief uh, um, demo, and I'm running out of time, I'm gonna cut it shorter, but, um, Yes, so here we have, uh, uh, for example, um, a recording that was uh, 
um, done by Luigi Nono, a famous uh, Italian composer uh, who um, was working very much with electronics and was, this particular piece, Contrapunto Dialettica La Mente, was commissioned by the Rai and was, the intent was to be an opera without stage. And uh, it, what's noticeable about this piece, uh, and this is not the final piece, this is just a segment of the material that was used uh, in the composition, is the fact that uh, um, the composer often used the different speeds to change uh, the effect of the tape and different effects. So it's very difficult to know a priori whether or not uh, there is a mistake in the playback or it was something that the um, composer wanted. For example, in this piece, oops, in this piece, um, the beginning you will notice So you will notice that uh, um, starting about here, if you see my cursor, <laughs> the original speed is 15 inch per second. But before this, obviously it was too fast. The playback didn't match the original, at least to our ears. So um, through the um, ARP use case, uh, we identify the fact that there is a mistake here possible mistake, not necessarily mistake, because again, we don't know 100% the intent of the composer. Um, possible mistake in terms of the speed of the playback of the first part. So uh, in the excess copy, we are um, we are actually providing also uh, the version where the beginning is played at what we feel would be the correct speed. And this is the idea. The Et cetera, et cetera. And the rest is uh, basically the same. So we don't substitute this to the, the original version of the document in the preservation copy. We just offer the alternative in the excess copy. So I really want to congratulate again my uh, colleagues and my team uh, uh, that uh, helped put together the ARP technology because they presented this technology at the World Artificial Intelligence Scan Festival in February and they, they were awarded the prestigious Scan Neurons 2023. And this award honors the most innovative and impactful AI project in the world. So again, congratulations to you guys. Um, I'm going to go very quickly, uh, the speech restoration, we mentioned it before, I'm going to give you just a, a quick example here. Hiding within the long grass. They have chicks in a nest nearby. Hiding within the long grass. High above, a pair of imperial eagles are keeping watch. They have chicks in a nest nearby. So I think this uh, demo is pretty self-explanatory, but you can see the segment, segment was missing and was derived based on the model of the voice and the text. Hiding within the long... Sorry. Um, <clears throat> the last use case, I'm not going to go through the details of this because Murta is going to be actually doing that and I'm running out of time is the enhanced audio conference experience. And the idea is that in input, we have a microphone array, array <clears throat> geometry. So depending on the microphone, uh, you may have different, uh, different type of input, but we take into consideration different type of microphones that we may use. And uh, the audio that was recorded. So it's multi-channel because we have to have multiple channel in order to capture not only uh, the audio content, but also the, feature of the environment and uh, you know after uh, decomposing the signal into spherical harmonics and uh, uh, separating uh, the sources uh, 
and if necessary, using some uh, uh, noise cancellation, the signal is resynthesized and packaged and interleaved, uh, multi-channel interleaved with the audio scene geometry in output. Again, um, Mert is gonna go into details because this is the subject of the reference software. Um, a very brief, oops, I'm sorry, a very brief demonstration. Um, this is this was a proof of concept. So this implementation was done in Python, but the actual the actual implementation you'll see in a moment. Um, so this is the idea that we have. Du to to de 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 I wrote for a long distance in one of the public services on the day preceding Christmas. The simplest method is to expand it. So we have three sources that are identified and separated. In the course of a December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. The coach was crowded, but... So this is the second one, if I were to capture... To administer medicine to animals is frequently a very difficult matter, and yet sometimes it's necessary to do so. The simplest method is to mix the medicine Le front froid qui traverse le pays d'est en ouest provoque un changement de temps et une baisse sensible des températures. And if the environment, the semaine, okay. if the environment is a little bit noisy, in this particular case, we have a very strong reverb that makes intelligibility impossible. So this is what we're starting from. In the course of the December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. The simplest method is to mix the And this is, these are the two voices separated and denoised. In the course of a December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. The coach was crowded. To administer medicine to animals is frequently a very difficult matter, and yet sometimes it's necessary to do so. The simplest method is to mix the medicine. Okay, so that's, that was kind of the proof of concept that allowed us to work on this use case and then come to a, a implementation. I would like to close my overview by mentioning the fact that we have also a version two, which is uh, which includes the addition of the audio scene description in a, in a way similar, but an improved version of, uh, uh, if you wish, of the AI. Um, and that is, this is actually considered a composite AIM. Um, right, so basically we, the idea behind uh, MPyKai is to improve the user experience by using the information of the environment to act upon the audio content. Um, in the technical spe specification version one, we have uh, four use cases, two of which are gonna be presented in detail in terms of reference software. Uh, the emotion enhanced speech, audio recording preservation, uh, restoration system, and enhanced audio, con uh, audio conference experience. Uh, version two, uh, we have an additional, what we call composite AIM, uh, that gives us uh, a, an accurate description of the audio scene. And this can be used in different contexts, like for example, in the metaverse, in the, um, in the um, autonomous vehicle um, application and so on and so forth. So this is kind of a, an important component for many other applications. I would like to thank, to thank the team uh, and Pi Kai community. I'm not gonna mention everyone, but you know who you are. So thank you for the great work. And uh, as Leonardo say, join the fun and join uh, MPI. So, Thank you very much. And uh, I leave uh, the microphone to Matteo. Matteo, are you ready? Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to introduce you the reference software of MPyKai ARP uh, use case. Uh, I'm skipping uh, the introduction because uh, Marina already said uh, what, uh, what it, it does. And uh, I'd like to start from uh, the equipping, equipment to, has to be used to convert from uh, analog to digital, the audio tapes. And here you can see the Studer, Studer A810, 
which is used at the University of Padua to convert uh, the tapes. Uh, the standard takes as input uh, the audio and the video for the tape. The video is the, uh, the framing of the video is this little area, area in which I'm highlighting with the cursor. Um, the audio is just uh, the headphones output from the, the student. And we convert uh, these uh, analog file, uh, analog uh, tapes uh, to WAV formats for audio and before format for the video. We peg for images of irregularities that occurs on the tape. And uh, another way we store a lot of metadata, which are the most important uh, aspect of the standard uh, in a JSON format. The, the software is uh, um, based on the client server architecture. Um, we have the client who, that can be on the host uh, of the of the machine, and uh, we dockerize the servers, uh, which are um, the modules you already saw in in the presentation of Marina. We have the audio analyzer, which is hosted at port 5051 and the video analyzer 52, a tape regularity classified, tape audio restoration, and the packager. And uh, they communicate with uh, the gRPC module, uh, gRPC standard. And uh, the client uh, send a dispatch request to the different modules, and each time he get a different response that can be an irregularity file, the result of a classification, or the the storage, uh, the, the stored file uh, in the standard way. So here there's a summary of what uh, the standard does. And the client, uh, as I said, dispatches a request over the network. Uh, and at the beginning, we ask for the audio analyzer and the video analyzer to find uh, irregularities. We see them in detail in the next uh, slides. Then we classify what we see, uh, what the, the modules, uh, the previous modules find. And at the end, uh, the packager collect audio, video, and metadata in a deliver, deliverable format. So if you want uh, the first version, version of this reference software is available at uh, this link, uh, where you have to request access uh, to the expert and by community. In this repository, you can find uh, the main repository where we have the dockerized uh, software, which can run by, by the Docker Composer. And we have many repositories, each uh, one for a module where the audio analyzer is implemented in Python, the video analyzer also both in C++ and Python, the tape irregularity classifier is implemented in Python, uh, also the, the rest. And there's a, uh, an addition, we have a library used uh, in every modules uh, written in Python. So starting by the audio analyzer, we provide, we feed him with uh, the audio files and the video files. Uh, as I already said, um, while the analog to digital conversion to open re-record, uh, the, the open re-recorded, as different parameters to be set. In particular, equalization, which is usually in IEC1 or IEC2, depending on the continent or where you are, um, standard. And uh, also we have uh, different speed settings uh, where we can have, from, it vary from 0.9 inch per second to 30 inch per second. Uh, the implementation of this uh, reference software has been trained mainly on tapes recorded at 7.5 and 15 inch per second since they are the most common. Uh, at the moment, the, the development team is working to acquire new archives so that we can extend the software capabilities in the future when the version two will, can, will come out. Um, the audio analyzer works uh, this way. We detect uh, for um, in, in the audio input, uh, moment of silence, then they, they are split in uh, files of 500 milliseconds or always in wave format. 
Then we can extrapolate uh, from this, this files uh, the first 13 math frequency substitute coefficients, which are representative to the classifier of each audio file. And a pertained classifier can uh, label what uh, we find in the audio. As you can see, this is the confusion matrix of our classifier which overall has a performance, an accuracy of 94, about 94%, which means that we classify correctly 94% of the input. Uh, I explain you briefly, uh, for example, the first line is a audio input uh, that was uh, recorded at 15 inch per second with the N standard and um, played back at 15 inch per second with the answer, so it's correctly played. Uh, we can recognize it uh, why for the uh, 100% of the time, but uh, with the same precision, we can recognize uh, the both the standard speed error for tapes that were recorded at the 7.5 inch per second with the N standard and played back at 15 inch per second with the C standard. So you see that uh, for those are 25 labels uh, or classes uh, as you want to call them, uh, which is a lot for a single model. Uh, usually they are less. Uh, and you can see uh, this model was trained also with the tapes uh, recorded and played back at uh, 3.75 inch per second. And since they were less uh, in the training set, uh, in the model cannot recognize it uh, really well, but uh, usually we don't see this type, this kind uh, of, um, of tape. So at the end of the classification, uh, the audio analyzer outputs uh, a file, uh, irregularity file where, the, where there is a list of irregularities, each one with a, a name, a unique name, uh, the um, indication of uh, a is stands for audio, the source where we found the irregularity, the moment when it occurs in the audio file, the type of irregularity. So we can have SSV, which stands for speed standard variation, or ESV, which stands for equalization standard variation. And with the path where we store the irregularity audio file of 500 milliseconds. And what uh, kind of irregularity was found? So here we have a uh, uh, speed variation as a, the example of um, Marina we already had, while the equalization is the same. In the audio analyzer, we output also the offset between the video and the audio preservation file, because at the end, the packager will synchronize them in the preservation, preservation method. So um, down the audio, we have the video part. Uh, here we input only the video file. We already can compute the, the offset between the two, so we don't need the audio. And uh, we can find these, uh, um, the, the standard uh, um, implement, uh, is implemented to recognize uh, maybe places, which are really common, and shadows. We also have marks on tape, uh, and uh, many other kind of irregularities which are less common and difficult to, to find to train a proper model on, the, on them. So um, the first version of this reference software can recognize really well, you see, the splices and shadows, but uh, we plan to extend our dataset to recognize also other kinds of irregularities. Anyway, we can uh, um, notify that there are other kinds of irregularity, but we are not able to classify them. Anyway, and these are tape irregularities taken from an archive, archive of research electronic music, and they are particularly significant because uh, the methodology is applied in all the, all the music produced to today and to today. Uh, so since uh, the 50s, the practice of altering recordings by making cuts and other manipulation has been introduced by research music, but was quickly adopted by rock, pop, and even classical music. So this is not uh, an abstract uh, things uh, just for research. 
but uh, it is a actual uh, um, way to manipulate music, uh, also in pop music, etc. And here we see the the frame uh, from a video. The green rectangle, um, in the green rectangle, we can see irregularities uh, from the playing of the tape, where, as we saw before, where splices, shadows, etc. But uh, we also care about this area and the right bottom of the image, where the, uh, under the capstone, which moves up and down, and we can detect the start and end of the tape playing. Uh, here, in the next slide, we can see uh, a video sample, so you can have a better understanding. As you saw, um, there's a movement of the capstan, you see, it is at down, and then it goes up. So it, the, the tape plane is starting, and uh, on the left, we get uh, the actual uh, machine, while on the right, uh, there's uh, um, a zoom on this uh, um, red rectangular area, and we see what the computer vision algorithm uh, sees uh, to detect uh, irregularities. So it starts, and uh, uh, we see this uh, uh, the result of a comparison, a comparison between consecutive frames, uh, and uh, white pixels stands for no variation in the image, while black pixels stand for variation between two frames. So when it comes uh, the, the splice uh, in the middle. You can see that we have a black image that notifies a, a completely different uh, scenario. Uh, so we detected uh, the splice and the irregularity. And then it goes back to a normal status. As you can see, there's often uh, some variation in between two frames. But we can detect, uh, detect uh, there's a, that there is a threshold. So when there's a more variation, we see a completely black image that is more significant. At the end, we get uh, an irregular image. This is the image from the video fragment we already we just saw. Uh, so there's a, a clearly visible splice on the tape. And we store it, uh, uh, this information, as an irregularity file, as well uh, as the audio, audio analyzer. This time, we don't have the classification result. Hey, did we lose Matteo? Or did we lose Matteo? Yes, yes. Next module. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, Matteo, um, Leonardo is uh, signaling that we probably should uh, hurry. Here we perform the correction of uh, digitization errors that can occur while the digitization operations. So here we have a, a sample of the same speed variation we, see, we saw before in the audio analyzer. Uh, we have, uh, it was originally at 7.5 inch per second, and then we record, we played it back at 15 inch per second. So in the next uh, slide, you can hear the, the difference between the acquired uh, um, audio and the restored audio. By the way, this is an unpublished and unique copy of the tape of a tape from the Luciano Barrio Personal Archive, and that we have uh, at uh, Audio Nova and uh, CSC Archive. And there's uh, the restoration. So you get the point. At the end, we. Um, the packager collects uh, all data in a consultable way and convenient system of folders. So uh, you can see uh, the, the standard um, provides a mass copy file, copy files, where we have restored audio files and uh, preservation master files, where, uh, where there is the original audio 
and the original video sync with the high definition input over. Uh, in this way, the standard provides an efficient way to store and detect uh, the detect irregularities as images instead of videos. This fact saves a lot of scarcity space in both economic and environmental terms without failing in philology. Um, this means that uh, uh, data centers are really expensive in terms uh, of uh, green and also money. So by storing images instead of video, it's better. So for my name is Marco Cacciatelli. I am, uh, my affiliation is uh, Asel San, and today I'm going to talk about the context-based audio enhancement, enhanced audio conference experience. Now, uh, it's just explaining the, the software. It's a GPU accelerated real-time implementation of the unsupervised enhanced audio conference experience. Now, what's the problem? The problem is just, uh, extracting clear speech objects in an audio scene. For example, let me let us think in an environment. Then speech objects creates a mixture, then that that can be recorded by a single microphone or microphone arrays. But uh, the recordings cannot be used by uh, other machine learning methods such as speech to text or any other tools directly because uh, it's a mixture with the speech. Now, uh, with this standard approved, then we use microphone arrays for the enhanced audio conference experience. And the, the main objective is the, creating the technology that processes microphone array recordings to extract the DOAs of the speed sources and then separate the speed source sources with a high level of interference suppression and a low level of artifacts and distortion. Now, at the end, uh, the, the method packages the speech objects with their directions for the usage of other AIMs. Then the advantage is just uh, making the environment uh, multi-speaker and uh, noisy environment suitable for the audio scene descriptors. Now, first of all, I would like to express unsupervised, then this is not a deep learning based method. The, the method is not limited to specific audio source types such as speech or musical instruments. And also uh, it's not specific to audio scene environment characteristics, for example, in different in environment, there are different wall structures or reverberation times, and uh, it does not limit it to the number of audio sources. Let us think about an audio scene. Uh, then this audio scene can have different audio objects that may be uh, persons or uh, musical instruments, just like a coffee machine or just claps. Then uh, this is a microphone array that can be that can record in 3D environment then we can obtain the multi-channel audio. Then this is the input of the enhanced audio conference experience. Then at the end, we create the separated objects and also the audio scene geometry. Now, uh, when we talk about the C++ real-time implementation, we have six AIMs here. Uh, these uh, are orchestrating to create an uh, output as a multi-channel audio. Uh, these, it consists of separated speed sources and audio scene geometry. In this uh, AIMs, they are already shared in the GitLab account of MPy and SF number one. These are source codes. Codes are available for these four AIM, and these two AIM. This is the speech detection and separation and noise cancellation. They are just compiled version are available over uh, the GitLab accounts. Now these AIMs are already compiled according to a GPU uh, then to, to work in real time. Then media GTX 1080 Ti, it's a low cost GPU around $200. Now what about the microphone array geometry? Uh, since we are working with the microphone array or different structures of the microphone array, we need a JSON file to define the microphone array geometry. Then this uh, my, JSON file has some different microphone array orientations. They may be spherical microphone arrays and uh, microphone array type, type can be rigid or open and the sampling times can differ in uh, different uh, collection of the audio sources. Now uh, at this uh, implementation we make the operations block by block and it's about can be 1024 uh, samples up to 4096 samples. Then uh, we have, uh, of course, design constraints to, to create uh, low, um, low delay. Uh, this may be calculated according to these uh, JSON file. Then a computationally efficient application, it can be deployed to many platform and GPU support uh, is uh, also required for the real-time usage. 
Let me introduce about the AAM. First of all, this is a signal processing block, then all the transformers synthesis transform. Our, uh, one is the FFT block, and the, the other one is the immersed FFT block. And uh, when we create the, when we capture the time domain multi channel signals uh, with the usage of analysis transform, we can obtain the time frequency domain signals. Then at the end, by the using of synthesis transform, it, uh, it can be uh, used to create dom time domain signals. And what about the sound field description? It's uh, when we get the time frequency domain multi-channel interlude signals, we capture the uh, aligned time frequency beams, then we capture the microphonic geometry, then we can describe the sound fields. Then if we use the first order spherical harmonics, then it can be said that ambisonics B formats, then this is named as spherical harmonics decomposition. But we are just uh, trying to uh, capture more number of microphones, then it can uh, go to third or the, or the fourth order spherical harmonics. Now, what about the speech detection and separation and noise cancellation part? This uh, is the uh, main AIMs that uh, process the signals, then it can be just uh, detailed descriptions can be obtained from these sources. Uh, this is the journal article and also the patent granted application. Now, what about the packager? Packager is at the end of this uh, process and it uh, captures the separated speech and its location and the other separated speech and location, then it's just like the object-based audio, not uh, the scene-based audio. Then by creating the object-based audio, the output is the multi-channel audio plus audio scene geometry. Now, uh, code and libraries are available at this GitLab account and EAE for each output block just uh, contains speech universal IDs to uh, associate each speech objects from one block to another block. Then speech directions with respect to the microphone array and also the timestamp is already provided uh, at each operational block. Now, uh, there are some demo setups that I would like to introduce. For example, this is an audio scene that uh, have two speed sources and they are moving inside the room. They, their direction is changing. But for example, this is the audio scene. If you have an omnidirectional single microphone, uh, let me say that it's omnidirectional. If it would be a directional micro, single microphone, you wouldn't hear uh, the sound pressure level in in good level for each speech object. None, let me play that one. In the course of a December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. The coach was crowded both inside and out with passengers who by their talk seemed principally bound to the mansions of relations to eat the Christmas dinner. Now, uh, these this audio, dirty channel microphones, it consists of, this is the eigen mic, then after the operation, we our uh, algorithm just outputs uh, the speech object directions. Each sign is an speech object, then uh, you will see that as it goes, the frame is a block, then uh, according to each block, the, the signals or the speech objects are just moving around the scene. Then at the center, there's a microphone array, then uh, the algorithm just captures uh, the scene locations the speech locations. Now what about the separated speech objects? Then the first one is Le front froid qui traverse le pays d'est en ouest provoque un changement de temps et une baisse sensible des températures. En fin de semaine, l'anticyclone des Açores se déplacera vers l'Espagne, entraînant des perturbations orageuses sur la plupart des régions du sud-ouest. In the course of a December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. The coach was crowded both inside and out, with passengers who, by their talk, seemed principally bound to the mansions of relations or friends to eat the Christmas dinner. As I said that this is an AIM output, then this output can be used in different AIMs. For example, speech to text AIM can be can be used, or after text to speech, it can be used. This is already just feed it to an AI algorithm, then it creates the text for these speech objects. Now, what about the next one? Is the stationary two speech objects? Let me first uh, play the. 
to Le unleash the medicine to animals, it would be a very difficult matter. And yet sometimes it's necessary to do so. The simplest method is to mix the medicine with en butter fin de semaine, or some other grease and smear it on the nose of the animal from time to time. Vers Naturally, it will lead to the grease off, and in this way will swallow the medicine. Du sud. Now the output of trajectory. Uh, they are stationary, then there is a margin that can be detected, the speech objects can be detected in these signs. This one is the uh, first object, the second object. Then as the frame goes out, then uh, they are stationary. Now the separated speech sources I will play. To administer medicine to animals is frequently a very difficult matter, and yet sometimes it's necessary to do so. The simplest method is to mix the medicine with butter or some other grease and smear it on the nose of the animal from time to time. Naturally, it will lick the grease off and in this way will swallow the medicine. The second one. Le front froid qui traverse le pays d'Est en Ouest provoque un changement de temps et une baisse sensible des températures. En fin de semaine, l'anticyclone des Açores se déplacera vers l'Espagne, entraînant des perturbations orageuses sur la plupart des régions du Sud. Now, since it's an enhanced audio conference experience, then there are some noisy cases in the high reverberant cases, and also uh, some musical instruments and other claps that may happen. For example, this case has high reverberant, and there's a single end speaker. Now I'm playing that one. In the course of a December tour in Yorkshire. I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. The coach was crowded, both inside and out, with passengers who, by their talk, seemed principally bound for the... And this is a separated one. <laughs> This is the second one. In the course of a December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. The coach was crowded both inside and out, with passengers who, by their talk, seemed principally bound to them. Now the other one, there are two instruments. First one, the second one. They are their locations are also uh, can be uh, obtained through this uh, case. And then the next one is, for example, there's claps and the speaker. In the course of a December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day of the season Christmas. The coach was crowded both inside and out with passengers who, by their thought, seemed principally bound to the. And the first one. <laughs> Of course, at this time, the main objective is getting the separated uh, speaker. To the December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. The coach was crowded both inside and out with passengers who, by their talk, seemed principally bound to the... Then there are two speakers, one is coughing, then the other one. <coughs> in the course of a December tour in Yorkshire, <coughs> I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches <coughs> on the day preceding Christmas. The coach was crowded, <coughs> both inside and out, with passengers who, by their talk, seemed principally bound <coughs> to the... 
the first one. <coughs> 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 Sorry for these sounds. The next one. In the course of a December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. The coach was crowded both inside and out with passengers who, by their talk, seemed principally bound for them. And these audio files are also available uh, at these accounts and these uh, file folders. And this is all. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mert. Um, we are there are other questions. If not, um, I promise Leonardo they wouldn't go further than 10 minutes. So I thank you all. I first of all, I wanted to give a round of applause to the speakers, Leonardo, Matteo, Mert, excellent job. And thank you all for coming and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.